All right, welcome back everyone to JFace Games. Today, what are we doing? We are gonna we're gonna try out uh, Crown and Skull. So here we got the rules. I'll, I'll, I'll get everything oriented here. I've got uh, my characters, and here are their character sheets. Boom of stuff. Uh, I've got the rules, and I'm gonna keep this on the skeletons. I've got my little abbreviated rules, so I can kind of quickly. This is on JFaceGames.com. This is my like quick overview of the game. Um, I think that I understand the rules completely. The only, um, yeah, I think so. Uh, they're pretty simplistic. Um, if I screw something up, let me know in the comments. And then we've got Owlbear up. So here we go. Let me orient you guys to who's in the party. We have uh, Josen right here. Ba -ba -bum. He's not a barbarian. Josen the fighter or the soldier in the system. We've got Caleb the cleric, which is accurate. Caleb the cleric. We have um, Galleon, the rogue, or the hoodlum. And he would be over here, marching order, dun dun dun. And then we have Canis, our, our magic user. Um, I believe he's called a, a scholar, Canis. Uh, the reason I have these names is because these are my old parties. These are my buds. Uh, so I'm gonna make them do stupid things because they might watch and they will be pissed at me when I have them do stupid crap. All right, so let's go ahead. What do we have here? We have um, five skeletons. I rolled 2d4, which it says in the playtest. Rolled 2d4 skeleton. Uh, so I've got five skeletons. I rolled crappy. And then we have uh, a skeleton elite. This one here is my skeleton elite. Wow, but it's open mall. Uh, let's see what happens. So um, I don't need to keep that there, and I don't need to keep this here. Uh, we're going to just start combat because that's going to be fun. Now, for this one, which is going to be a little different than, say, um, the last couple of these. So I did a Dragon Bane. How's it play? For this one and for Shadow Bane, which I'll hopefully do next, um, combat is not necessarily purely tactical. It's not like a 4E style game, uh, meaning Dungeons and Dragons 4E or Pathfinder, where you can just show purely the tactics of the game and um, get a feel for it, right? Now, I think that these kind of games, you need to do a little RPing. You need to be swashbuckling, bouncing off the wall, trying to do cool stuff. Uh, because if I just did, I walk up, I attack, I walk up, I attack. These are games where your actions aren't necessarily very detailedly tactical, right? There's not like nine different actions to attack with. I don't have features like in 5e that I would be using. No, I've got a swing, right? So if I just did, I walk here, I swing, I walk here, I swing, I walk here, I swing, that would be very boring and maybe would turn people off to the game. No, the role-playing aspect is probably what makes the combat in these games actually a little more exciting. So I'm going to try and uh, emote that a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead. And so now we have our first aspect, which is um, the phases. So there's five phases of combat, and you can see that in the bottom right of this uh, recording. And the players get to decide what phases they're in. I'm going to let them decide based on tactics what they would think they would do. Uh, and I'm going to let the skeletons, I'm not going to let them know when the skeletons go yet, right? I don't even know because I haven't looked at it yet. So, Josen, being the tankier soldier type, he wants to hurt things, but he wants to help people. He wants to be able to react to what's happening. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Josen's gonna go in two, right? He's gonna let Galleon go first to see what kind of happens in the battle. Uh, I think that Caleb is gonna go last because he's gonna want to heal people and potentially like mop up whatever the hell happens in the combat. And then I think Canis. Um, we'll put him in the middle. We'll see what happens, right? He could technically go, you know what? He's going to go with, um, Josen so that they can choose. I would assume that, well, that, get, I believe that gives him the choice in terms of during phase two, either one or the other goes and they can kind of mix it up. All right. So now let's see when these guys go. It looks like phase three is when the skeletons are going. <laughs> And when it comes to our Skeleton Elite, oh, joy, he goes on uh, Phase 4, right? He goes on Phase 4. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so now we have something happening every phase. Well, that worked out well. Okay, so Galleon. Galleon's going to do what Galleon does. Galleon's probably going to... He doesn't have a bow and arrow, so he's not going to shoot anything. So let's go over here and look what Galleon has. Galleon, he is skilled in stealth, uh, lockpicking, disguise, jumping. That's good. Uh, and when I say skilled... These are okay. I mean, we're first level peeps, right? This is going to be brutal. Uh, but he's got a lot of stuff on, which is good. And he's got his long sword. He doesn't have any ranged weapons, so that could be a problem. So what he's going to do is he's going to stealth. So he's got plus three stealth. 
I'm going to say that these skellies haven't seen them just yet. You know, he's coming around the corner. If he gets a 12 or lower, he's going to be... Uh, what? I rolled it out of the thing. Uh, he gets a 9. Okay, so he it goes into a stealth mode. Uh, that's technically, I don't believe that's an action. So he's going to stealth, and then he's going to move. And where's he going? Uh, he'll go one, two... He's going to go like six feet. We don't have to count boxes. I'll just say it's like six inches is what they say on the table. Um, so he's going to kind of come over here and kind of be hiding up against this wall. Um, he's hoping that if this skeleton comes down, he might be able to just shove him into the pit, which would be pretty cool. Uh, that brings us to Josen and Canis. Well, what do those two peeps do? Well, Josen is going to be your helm chainmail warhammer badass. And then Canis is supposed to be a sage caster, and he does have something called fire blast. The problem is that currently, I believe, since this is a first level ability that has not been sort of like boosted in any shape or form, that means that it's a touch ability. Basic abilities are touch, single target, d6 damage. Uh, so at this point in time, he has to get in there and touch the guy, which that's gonna be problematic. Let's go ahead and open up that spell real quick. So here you can see fire blast, explosive fire from the caster's hand. Uh, so at this point in time, it is literally just right there. Um, because it is, from my understanding, uh, at this point in time, because it is a base effect, base spell level range, all spells require touch at default range. So uh, that's what we're dealing with at this moment. So he's probably going to... I'm going to open this up so I have a different page here. Okay, so Canis is... He's going to just do his thing. I'm going to run up here. I'm going to cast Fire, Fire Blast. Fire Blast, because it's a spell, means that I have to um, roll... To make sure that I don't F myself, I guess. And he's, this is a magic skill. So I'm going to do a magic skill to make sure some sort of um, infernal or unstable thing doesn't occur. Magic skill. The magic skill is rolled to contain infernal and unstable spells. Or utilize the wizard savant ability. It is also used as a defensive measure. So contain infernal and unstable spells. I don't think this spell that he's casting is an infernal or unstable spell. This is where it comes into play. So if I were ever to create a spell, and I wanted that spell to have a little extra oomph, I could make it unstable or infernal. So no, he does not have to cast anything like that. So he is just going to do a normal d6. He ends up doing four damage. Um, and if we look at the defense of the elite skeleton, uh, nope, sorry, up here. Defense three, um, hit points 10. So I'm going to put down the skellies down here just so I'm taking attack. Um, I don't think the defense is going to be against magic. I think that defense is against armor. So I'm going to say it does the full damage just because I'm the DM. I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it ride. Um, so he does six damage to that one. There are still other skeletons with ten hit points each, which is a, a decent amount of hit points. Um, so the problem here is that he hurried. Right, so in order to run over here and attack, that means he was hurried, which means that it's easier for him to get attacked by this skeleton. So we're gonna have Josen now run over, and he's gonna kind of jump in between them. I'm gonna say that he gets in between as his movement, he pushes in, uh, because that's the kind of thing a tanky tank would do, right? So he gets in there, and now it would be the skeleton's turn. So the skeletons are gonna go, and this one's gonna be running around here because he's trying to see um, what's happening. You know, he's being ordered, so these two come over here. Um, this guy is walking down this way, but he's letting his minions travel into this tunnel first. So they're kind of churning in here. This one is going to attack our boy Josen. That means Josen has to make a defensive roll. If we look over here, what Josen has to do, Josen has to defend against dun, 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 11 AC. Urgh! That means um, what he has to do is roll a d20 and get an 11 or lower. He rolls a 1. He rolls a critical. Oh, my God. Okay, critical success. Uh, maximal version of success or critical successes overcome impossible odds. Grant extra time or defy belief. I'm going to say that he gets a hero point because we can add it into the system. So he's now got a hero point. Not a hero point. A hero dice. So at this point in time, he's got a hero dice that he can utilize to help him in whatever endeavor that he gets into later on. And we're gonna say it's this hero coin. So at some point in time, he might be able to do max damage, roll again, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, I, I digress, let's get back into the combat. So now, uh, that is phase three, there's the skeletons. So the skeleton elite, he then walks down here, that's his phase. Um, so he's back here. 
And he's, uh, he doesn't have any ranged attacks. Um, he's just itching for something. Uh, now we have, um, it's, it's our cleric. It's our cleric's turn. He's going to walk up and he's going to say, um, behave yourselves or some sort of, um, some sort of call to arms because he has an ability. What does he have? He is Caleb, uh, and he has Paragon of Faith. Uh, faith still grows. I don't know what this means because this was on page 85 and we don't have that. So he can destroy weak undead with a D6, a, a D6 amount of weak undead as an exhausting spell. I don't know what an exhausting spell is. Um, let's try and find it if we can. Ah, here we go. Exhausting spell. No magic can be used for one round after cast. One minute? One round after cast. Okay, so if he casts this... Uh, he's not going to be able to cast a spell, I believe, his next turn either. So he's going to be out of it. But that's good. Who cares? He's going to try and knock out all three of these skellies here, and he gets a oh, he gets a four. Um, I'm not going to say he doesn't. These skeletons don't see him, so he's just going to just completely eradicate, I believe, uh, these skeletons because he is using Paragon of Faith. Uh, destroy 1d6. Oh my god. You know, it pays to have a cleric around. Boom! All three of these detonate. Bones are striking all across the wall. Uh, this guy's a little pissed off. Uh, if he can, I believe he's got some sentient life form. But now we go to the beginning of the faces again. So now it's Galleon. Galleon's gonna do his thing. Ha! He's gonna try it. So attacks automatically hit in this game. Uh, so he... I would assume... That at this point in time, an attack would automatically hit, but I'm trying to shove someone. There's no real rules for shove, so I would say, uh, as a DM, I'd say, hey, use your jump ability. You're going to try and, you know, jump up and boom, hit both with your feet. I'm okay with that. And since you're stealthed right now, you're hidden, I'll give you that plus three, so why not? So you get an 11 or lower. Can he do it? He gets a five. Yeah, so Galleon is going to come out of the shadows. Boom! Kick this skeleton, bootleg him off, and now he's one on one with this other skelly. And that's his whole turn. All right, now we have uh, Josen, who's going to run up here and. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, he's going to run up here and attack. And if we look at this, uh, this badass here, he has phase four, so that's when he attacks. He's not in other phases, but when he does go, it's going to be bad. He's going to get three different rolls, and we're going to find out what happens. Not to mention, the man's got 50 hit points, so they feel good right now because they just eradicated things, but shit's about to get real. Uh, Josen's going to come up. He auto-hits. Uh, might as well do max damage because he's got this hero coin. He's, you know, going to do immediately 10 damage. Boom! Which means that he's going to stun the guy for a d6 phases. And that means he stuns for four phases, which that will actually eliminate that guy's turn. So if we're on phase two, he's going to be stunned for four phases, which means phase three, phase four, phase five, phase one. So the next time that guy goes, he's going to go. Uh, and he does 10 damage. So this guy's already at 40 hit points. This isn't going so bad, folks. Having a cleric around? This feels good. That's all I'll tell you that. All right, who's up next? Uh, our, um, our caster. So Canis is now going to come up. He's not going to do much. What has he got? Canis has already cast his ability of Fire Blast. Uh, he could levitate to just kind of get some distance. Um, he's going to... What is he going to do? He's maybe going to do some investigation. I'm going to say that he's going to move and investigate because he's trying to find out maybe if there's some weak points on this guy. And he says, I, I want to know, if, is there something I can see or do? And uh, Let's find out if he gets anything. He gets a 10. So I, as the uh, DM, would say, no, it's too, it's, you're, the adrenaline's pumping too much. You can't see because Josen's swinging a freaking war hammer in front of you and there's a giant skeleton. You can't really see back there. So no, you don't see anything of importance or note that might help you in this fight. And he's like, damn it. Uh, the other skeletons, this guy, he's the only one left. He's going to attack um, our boy Galleon. Galleon, this is what I thought was interesting. So his defense is not that great. But what I did was I bought a ton of one ex one cost items for his build because this makes him more durable. I can mark these things off. So he's going to try and defend against this. Um, he gets a nine. Uh, he's fine. Defense nine. Rolls a nine. Boom. So he kind of nimbly bimbly jumps out of the way. The skeleton slices at him with whatever slicing things. I'm going to say instead of a weapon, this guy has his his hand is missing and the um, the ulna has been filed down to a sharp, and the radius is filed down so it's sharp, so his actual forearm is a bladed weapon. Uh, and uh, Galleon's kind of scared of that because it's disgusting. 
and there's ooze dripping off of it, so you don't want that, you know, getting inside you. Um, next up would be the skeleton leap, but he's his his cracked skull because of uh, the stun effect from uh, Josen. I assume we, let's check to make sure he can be stunned. There's nothing on here that says that he's resistant to stun, so he's stunned. Uh, and then finally we have Caleb, and Caleb hears the scuffle up north, and it looks like Josen's doing his thing, so he's going to run over here, and that's his move. He runs. All right, now, top of the order, Josen doing his thing, karate chopping. He's going to slash again, get a D10 damage. He does, he does another 10 damage. This is where things are getting a little crazy. He does 10 damage. Does that mean I just keep stunning this mofo? If Oh, i got to roll D6 to see how many I stun. So if I get a... He gets a six. The guy's stunned again for another round. Josen is just wailing. I'm going to say that he's actually pushing this guy back. They're like, he's just slamming him with this fucking warhammer. Brutal. Uh, then we have Canis. Canis is actually going to, he thinks this this is going well. He's going to run in here and shillelagh him with his uh, staff. Uh, Caleb has a, um, what has he got? Uh, nope, not Caleb. We have Canis here. Canis has a warhammer or walking staff. Wapa! Hits him for two. This uh, giant skeleton's down to 28 at this point in time. So that's them. We go to phase three. Phase three is the other skeleton. He is going to attack um, Galleon. So Galleon has to defend himself again. Galleon's got to get a nine or lower. He gets an 18. Not good. So what? Well, let's find out what's happening. Sorry. I jumped the gun on that. We got to see. Roll a d6. We know that Galleon's going to fail. But let's roll a d6 to, d6 to see which tactic... The skeleton is using. He rolled a six. Cleave attack. The skeleton builds enough strength to swipe its weapon at up to three foes in one strike. So Caleb shows up and then immediately gets smacked in the face uh, with this attack. And so this attack is attack three, uh, which means that Galleon would actually have to have. I, I screwed up. Galleon's last round, when he rolled a 9, which was his defense, he actually needed to get a 6 because of the attack value of this skeleton. So let's go back and retcon a little damage from that as well. We'll just say, if I can roll it, uh, that he had to do basic attrition. So Galleon would have taken a bump of some sort, and we'll say that his uh, rope got shredded in the process. He's going to click that one off. And now both Galleon and Caleb are getting hit. Um, I'm losing myself, losing myself. Where is this? All right. They're both getting a hit uh, with basic attrition. So now we'll say that Galleon's... He's not going to lose his lockpicks. His climbing gear gets smashed. Oh, no, Galleon. Hold it together. Uh, meanwhile, Caleb's got to choose something. Caleb doesn't have a lot of equipment. So he's going to lose his... Holy schmoly. Um, I'm going to say it's his scholarly... <laughs> he can't think right now. Don't ask him... Oh, no, actually, this is even better. Don't ask him to heal anything, right? He doesn't know what's going on. His brain just got rattled to schmitherines. Uh, and that's fine. All right, now we have the big bad. He's stunned again because Josen is whomping. And then we have Caleb, Caleb himself. Uh, he sees that Galleon's getting kind of beat up a little bit. So he's going to cast armor. What does armor do? Let's find out together. So, let's see. Well, maybe he doesn't cast armor. Let's see what the spells are. He has, um, I think I went with him being a little bit more utility-based and buffy, kind of kind of cleric -y. He's got a heal, he's got purify, he's got armor. Yeah, he's going to cast armor. And that means that he has to touch Galleon. So he runs up here. That's putting him in a dangerous spot. And he's going to touch Galleon, giving Galleon a plus three to his AC. So now he has to actually roll a nine or lower. And Galleon feels good about that. He says, thank you, buddy. And Caleb's like, no problem. Uh, now we go to the top of the lineup, and it's Josen again. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I mixed up the order. It's Galleon again. So Galleon is now going to slash at this Skeleton. And I believe that Galleon gets a D8. Uh, so he's going to do his D8 longsword. And he does one damage. Not good. Not good. Um, not good at all. So this is a fresh Skeleton, so he's at 9. Uh, we now have Josen, who has been crushing face. He's going to do another D10 damage. And he gets a four. Uh-oh. Now we see what happens. Now we're playing with fire. Uh, so Josen is gone. Canis, seeing that the skeleton is gaining composure, is probably going to hurry. So he's going to hurry. And why is he going to hurry? Because he doesn't mind that the skeleton is going to get extra bonus to attack him because he doesn't plan on being there. So he's going to do four damage with his staff. Good luck, Josen. And then he's going to run behind Josen and come back over here. Right? So he's going to do a hurry action. Boom. 
Uh, now we have this little Skelly goes to market, and he is going to attack. Uh, we're going to say that he's attacking Galleon. You know, he's got this Galleon right in front of him. Galleon has to defend himself. Galleon has to get a nine or lower. Um, he gets an eight. Oh, thank God, Caleb. Thank you, Caleb. All right, his cloak is shining and shimmering as it's kind of been like, um, maybe there's electricity to it, or maybe it's a blurring effect. I don't know. Whatever it is, the skeleton hits this cloak, and it kind of shimmers and kind of um, shred, uh, it blocks it from being shredded. And Caleb's like, mm, you know, thumbs up, holds up his little cross. He's like, don't like me, thank my God. Uh, and then we have, what are we doing next? We have, oh yeah, big guy. All right, so what is this big guy going to do now? Let's see what the massive skeleton does. He gets three tactics. Okay, so first tactic, he is going to two. He's going to skeleton uses rotten weapons such as iron spears or rusty scimitars, destroy attrition. Well, let's look at what destroy attrition means. Um, destroy one random equipment and cross off one randomly selected skill. Destroyed equipment is permanently lost. That sounds bad. Uh, my assumption though is that this is still an attack, right? So this is a I would assume that this only happens if he actually hits. So that means that uh, our boy Josen has to defend. And this guy has an attack value of five. Um, oh, wait a minute. We haven't been using his defense to get rid of damage. So pretty much everything that's come from uh, our boy the Caleb has done no damage. Um, and then... This is interesting, because what happens, maybe he didn't get stunned those two different times, because he didn't technically do seven or more damage. He would have done, um, he hit for nine, or max damage, which was ten, he actually did five damage, so we'll give him five back. And then he hit for another time for max damage, but it would have been five. So, I'll be curious about that from a ruling from the creator, to see if... Uh, when the if that Warhammer has to do seven full damage, it's got to get through and do seven damage to him. So, uh, anyways, this guy's back up to thirty-one hit points because we've given him back some hit points. Uh, so, what's Josen got to do? Josen's got to defend himself. Josen has a defense of eleven because he's tanked out. He gets a two. Boom! Come on, come on, come at me, bro. Uh, the next thing, the skeleton, same thing. Josen gets a one. Ah! Oh, I'm gonna give him another hero point. I'm gonna give him another. He's just. Or hero coin. Why not? Because he's a badass. Uh, and then finally, the skeleton is going to do uh, one more of those attacks. And Joe's in. I got another one, by the way, but I'm not going to give him another another hero. That's ridiculous. Joe's in is crushing face. He's gotten three crits so far. What the hell? What is happening? Uh, then we have Caleb here. Caleb is going to do a little shuffle shuffle, which doesn't count as a full move because he's trying to flank this guy. Um, and he's going to use his uh, Warhammer, I believe. No, he doesn't have a Warhammer. He's got a um, a mace. <laughs> he's going to do a D8 damage. Uh, here's D8. And he, he does 8 damage. Boom. This guy is uh, very hurt. Let's take a look at some of our other abilities here. Because we haven't been using them. Josen is a battle master. His di Shit. His dice explode. When he rolled D10s and got those 10s, he should have exploded them. Let's do it anyways, because that would have made it so that we didn't have to retcon the stuns. So he had two of them, and so he would have done an extra 17 damage. I like it. Um, that makes it feel better, so then he would have actually stunned the creature. Exploding dice? Thank you very much, Josen. That's an interesting question, then, because for Josen, being a battle master, he probably shouldn't have a Warhammer, right? Because the chance of getting a 10 is awful. Maybe he should have had like a D6 weapon, right? Maybe he should have had a um, shield and like smaller hand axe that does a D6 because chances are I can get more of those out. But this worked out anyways. Galleon, if he had a second foe here, he could be, with a brutal fighter, he could be making doot doot doot, you know, knocking out different guys simultaneously. Uh, our other people, we've been, they don't have really abilities for combat in that sense. Where are we at? What's happening? Uh, Josen's up. Josen has been whomping face. He's going to just immediately do damage. He rolls a three. That's not going to get through the amount of uh, resistance defense this guy has, so he does nothing. And we'll say that he's kind of moving around, dancing with this guy. Uh, Canis has a spell. He can levitate. That's not going to do him much good. Man, he should have brought some form of ranged action. You know what? I'm gonna, he's going to use his sack of ball bearings. I think that expends it. And he's going to just come over here and chuck them on the ground underneath the skeleton. I don't... The player does that, and I would say, I don't know what that means. So what we're going to do is 
I would say that Josen gets advantage on his next defensive roll. Uh, I don't know if I think that advantage is a thing in this system, but I would say that he gets advantage on his next defensive roll because this guy's all slipping around like, oh, you know, roller skating. Uh, then we have the skeletons. The skeleton is going to, uh, he didn't like the shimmer shimmer. So he's going to then turn around and, well, this is the shimmer would have lasted for a D6 phases. And I rolled a five. So that would have been one, two, three, four. It technically would be on, nope, it would be over. Uh, it would have been on Caleb's turn. It went around and helped. It's gone. So he's going to go ahead and attack Galleon one more time because he's on this kick. Galleon does not defend, so Galleon is going to lose another piece of equipment. He's like, God damn it. I have all this equipment. It's just going to hell. Oh, now we're getting tricky. He's going to lose his caltrops. All right. Good thing he had all this stuff on him, but it's all shattering. Uh, and then we have the big bad again. The big bad is going to... First thing he's going to do is he's got a six. Cleave attack. The skeleton builds enough strength to swipe its weapon at three foes. Oh, you shouldn't have come up here. Okay, he's going to attack both our boys. I'm going to say that Josen has um, defense or advantage. So he rolls an 11, which this guy has attack value of five. So he's got to get six or lower. So he, six, he um, gets a four on the second roll. So he succeeds with his attack. Canis, on the other hand, has a five. He's got to get a natural one. And uh, he gets a three. He almost got it. Uh, but he takes damage. What kind of damage does he take? He takes destroy attrition. So whatever this is, destroy one random equipment and cross off randomly selected skill. Oh, God. Brutal. All right, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got six skills. We'll say it's... Oh, he's lost his spell research. And then for equipment, there's three. One, two, three. We'll say that he has lost his walking staff. His walking staff has shattered. Okay. All right, Caleb. What are you doing, buddy? You kill this thing yet? No. All right, Caleb's going to kill this thing. He's got a D8 damage to do. He does... Oh, he rolls a one. No damage. Balls. Okay. Now things are getting hairier as I start to use the rules better. Uh, Josen, do your thing. Max damage. I've got a hero coin. Max damage, which means I did 10 damage plus another D10. So 14 damage, but this guy's going to knock off five of it. So we do nine. This guy's at only this guy's only at five hit points. So we're getting there. Josen just and he's he's still moving around, moving around. He's Muhammad Ali, this thing dancing on him. Um, Josen was not supposed to go first. I apologize. Phase one, Galleon. Galleon, please kill this thing. Galleon does seven. Uh, this thing has attrition um, of defense of three, which means he's going to do four damage. I screwed up earlier, and I technically, uh, Caleb, when he rolled his eight damage, should have only done five damage. But this extra four, this would kill him. So skeleton down. All right, and you know what? I'm gonna say that Galleon's gonna hurry. Why? Because uh, no one's gonna attack him and we need to get in here. We need to help our boys. Uh, that skeleton phase two would happen. We already had Josen go. Uh, Caleb no longer has a walking staff. What he's gonna do is he's gonna look around and there's a rock. I'm gonna say there's a big boulder. And he's gonna say, can I pick up this boulder? And I'm gonna say, hell yeah, you can pick up the boulder. And he's gonna say, can I pick it up and cast levitate? And I'm gonna say, fuck yeah, you can do that. So he's gonna cast levitate. He's going to go up into the air above this guy. And let's see how long he can do it for. He's going to do it for six phases, which means that on his next turn, he's going to try to drop said boulder onto the head of this skeleton. That sounds fun. Uh, let's see if everyone lives until that point. All right, the skeleton now goes. He is going to move over here because now I'm going to say he's close enough to the galleon. Galleon's like, oh, hell. And he's going to do tactical. First thing he's going to do is he can attack Josen. Josen has to get a um, dun, 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 a six or lower. Um, he gets a three. Josen's a badass. Josen is the hero of ages. Um, he oh, Josen crit fails. What does a crit fail do against an attack? Let's find out together. Um, each of these rolls will create a maximum version of success or failure. Critical success overcomes impossible odds. Critical fails cost precious equipment. Accelerate destruction. So I'm going to say uh, crit fail means that he gets double the loss of stuff. So we have destroy attrition. I'm going to let him choose one of the items from his critical fail. And we'll say his critical fail. Oh, God. He loses his torches. This is where things get hairy. Because uh, he's got to lose something random. 
from both of these. So from his top things, D4 for both of them, he's going to lose his muscle. He's gotten weakened. He gets shredded across like a tendon. And so now he doesn't have leverage to be able to do stuff. Equipment-wise, he loses his chainmail. His chainmail has busted. What does this mean? Oh, God. He's down to like, I think chainmail gives plus three. So now he's down to eight AC. We'll say eight, and we'll do this so that we know that in the future, that's what he would have. Holy schmoly. All right, we're not good. Uh, then it would be uh, Caleb's turn, or Can mm, Caleb's turn. Caleb's going to run over here. <laughs> Full run. All right, he's here. He's not going to hurry. That would be bad. Uh, the skeleton still goes. He's got one more action. And for his last one, oh, what do you know? It's a it's an area effect attack. I'm going to attack. He rolled a six. Everybody, everybody gets smashed. Uh, so now Josen's got to get a three or lower. Uh, he fails. He's going to lose another piece of item. Things are getting, things turned quickly here. Uh, he loses his helmet. So now he's down to seven. And then this is pays to have lots of little stuff. And uh, Galleon, he also fails because he has a nine and it's minus five. He has to get a four lower. And he is going to lose um, his lockpicks. He was trying to hold on to his lockpicks, but they're gone, folks. Okay, he loses his lockpicks. Okay, now what are we going to do? We got Galleon going first. This It's just, let's do this, guys. Let's. We just got to get five hit points away from this guy. Please, to the love of God. Galleon is going to do... Um, a d8 damage with his longsword. Uh, he does three. That's not enough damage. Thank you, Galleon, for playing. You may go home. All right, now Josen's going to go. He's got a d10. Please do some massive damage. He rolls a one. Oh, thank you for playing. All right, our caster. He is levitating. He kind of levitates <laughs> over there. He's got a big boulder. How much do you think a boulder would do damage-wise? Let's say... Well, let's think about this. Let's just say that it's like a warhammer. Right? If it's a big enough boulder and you're dropping it on someone's head, we'll say it's a Warhammer. Because that's a blunt um, blunt piece of fun. So what does the Warhammer do? The Warhammer does D10. Right? I like that. Can he be the savior of the people? A 10. <laughs> 10 damage. Minus 5 from the skeleton's defensive. And he had 5 hit points left. Dead. All right, uh, he drops this boulder and then immediately kind of falls to the ground himself. This guy's dead. This skeleton's actually alive and crawling around here. And he's upset. Um, and the party is done. So there you go. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, the phases were smooth. I thought that was really smooth and easy. You just kind of roll through that and it keeps you on track. Um, it's kind of an initiative order, right? Uh, but it's just you don't have to roll. You just kind of pick real quick. Uh, would I would would that be tactical enough that the players would want to switch their order in the future? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we didn't have to do any healing. This is this begs the question also of should because my guys, I took a lot of equipment damage, right? I probably didn't need to do that. Now some of them didn't have an option, but Galleon definitely did. And Galleon, instead of taking equipment damage, I probably could have taken lockpick instead of like caltrips or disguise. He's not using disguise right now instead of rope. And then you could have had Caleb actually heal that, right? Caleb's got a healing light. And so there's probably options that I, with Galleon, I chose a bunch of equipment because I knew that I could destroy it instead of taking damage into my skills. But there's a benefit probably in terms of healing those skills up. Um, fun game. I had a lot of blast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the playthrough. And let me know in the comments. Hit the bell. Hit the subscribe button. We'll do some more of these. We're going to have some fun.